My name is Hans Fabach, and I teach in the theology department. And I have a number of teaching, uh, research, and personal interests that uh, relate to what's going to be talked about today. Welcome to our first panel, which is personhood and evolution. And I think we've given our panel a bit of an unusual task, which is not to present a full finished paper, but to speak for roughly 15 minutes on the topic of personhood, not as a technical term, but more generally, what is it that makes us us in a unique way in the context of an evolutionary account of origins. So what we're hoping for is to just generate lots of different ideas, questions, perspectives, issues, interdisciplinary um, connections or tensions and to stir that all together to make some interesting food for thought for some discussion here in this session, but then also in uh, the, the second panel session and then looking forward to uh, Professor Jaworski's talk. So I'm going to introduce our first speaker. Dr. C.J. Love earned a BS in genetics from the University of Wisconsin-Madison and worked in clinical cytogenetics until she stayed home to raise her three children. While at home, she returned to school and eventually entered the Constructive Theology PhD program at Loyola University Chicago, where she focused on the intersection of science and theology. Her dissertation, Rethinking Anthropomorphism Through a Genetic Event Philosophy of Time, explored a holistic understanding of the person through a biological, philosophical, and theological lens. Since then, Dr. Love delivered, has delivered and published papers on the person and temporality, and she currently teaches at Lewis University and Loyola University. So please join me in welcoming Dr. C.J. Love. So when I first read our title, Personhood and Evolution, um, I, the scientist in me was very excited and said, personhood must be 46XX or 46XY, meaning either a female or a male. And then all of a sudden, the philosopher in me slammed on the brakes and said, wait a minute, you can't do that. There's more to personhood than just our bi biology. Um, our personhood must encompass our life events, what's going on in our day-to-day -day living. What makes us us is not just our biology. And then, of course, the theologian in me said, wait a minute, it, um, contemptibly, my inner self stated, look, personhood also transcends our day to day, um, reflects our ability to understand something greater than ourselves. Okay? And I will actually maintain that that last point is one way we, un we can understand personhood within evolution, meaning our ancestors. We'll see that later on. All right, so yes, it's very crowded in my intellect. And so I asked the question, well, who's correct? What of those is right? And uh, so I Googled it. Like all of us researchers, the first thing I did is I said, okay, what is personhood? Um, and personhood, what I found out was the quality or condition of an individual person having in human characteristics. I'm like, okay, that really wasn't very satisfactory to me. I mean, it's like defining the um, definition with a with the with same word. So I went back and looked at some of my research, and I looked at, through a biological, philosophical, ph philosophical, and theological lens, and I got this, what it means to be her human within a life world, our life world, with all that it entails. Okay, it's very broad. We like very broad things. Um, so then as a human, as in a biological creatures, one of the things um, I will ma maintain is that, um, uh, that humans uh, could not experience personhood without our human genome, both because humanity could not exist without our genetic instruction and because 
DNA plays a significant role in how we as individuals act, interact and with each other, believe it or not, and with our environment. Um, yet our DNA does not function alone. It acts in relation with other cellular apparatus, with the rest of our body, with the brain, with our environment. And when I, when I say that, I want you to think about a time change. Okay, I want you to think about time changes. I want you to think about um, what happens when you take a trip over to Europe and you have to readjust. Your circadian rhythms have to readjust. Um, that is your biology working together along with your environment in order for you to readjust to the new, um, new situation. All right. This renders our DNA dependent on relationality. All right. So, our, so what we see then is that this, the advent of our, li of our life, the source of all possibility and the meaning occurs in the transmission of DNA. All human adventure starts with our DNA, which is inherited from our parents and who inherited them from their parents, who inherited from their parents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so this uh, passing on of genetic code concretely connects us to our past and opens up to f future potential. We need our DNA and our past mutations, AKA evolution in order for our species to become what we are today, human persons. Yet, we live in a life world. Our biologic, biological body functions within this life world. And here I turn to philosophy, and namely in my research, I return to event, um, event phenomenology. And as persons, we understand ourselves through the lens of life-changing events, where upon reflection of this event, we see an upending, a shaking up, a I am not the person I was before this event. So in my life, if I had to reflect on a life-changing event, it would be the birth of my first child. The 26-year-old I was before my first child came along and the 26-year-old after the tw the, I had my first child were, are very different people. Um, it was an upending experience. And since I still have a relationship with my daughter, um, I still, it still is a life-changing event for me. Okay, so this is on um, this upending. So um, in this event also shapes and continues to shape my data day understanding of my own personhood or how I encounter my being in the world. A being in the world that also transcends in my situation or what I would say transcends the ordinary into the extraordinary. Okay, so um, my ability due to evolution to transcend this ordinary to seek something greater than myself and in my situation I would say that's God in Christianity we'd say that God uh, speaks it you know, uh, seeks or speaks to me from uh, this understanding of knowing the infinite or knowing the infinite mystery. All right. So when we look at personhood and evolution in our ancestors, uh, one of the things that if we say personhood is humanness, and if humanness has something to do with self-understanding, then we see that humanness exists uh, 2,000 in uh, 2050, I mean, years ago. Wait a minute, I think I forgot a zero on there. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot a zero. There should be, it'd be uh, 2050, what, whatever, years ago. And then, so, so basically, what we see in, in um, the cave art, in the um, <coughs> burial practices uh, of our ancestors, this understanding of something greater than self. Uh, that they had an understanding uh, that, that uh, seems to be uh, similar to what we call um, spirituality, okay? So in, in my situation, or for me, uh, personhood reflects this, 